Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? My name is Tony Rosano, and this is episode 322 of the world famous The University Love, the best podcast in one, two, three galaxies. But ladies and gentlemen, you and I, we just call it online marketing moves, and we are coming to you live today. Today is July the 1st, 2021. You know something? My wife does not like the way I say the phrase July. July. She says July, I think, and I say July. So, you know, I, I what how do you say it? How do you pronounce the month of July? July. July, you know. I, I don't know. My wife is funny sometimes. Uh whenever I I according to her, quote, I'm put air I'm going to put air air quotes on there. According to my wife, I have an accent, you know, and sometimes it, it's kind of heavy according to her you know and then she says when you go back to missouri and you, you get around your family that accent gets super thick and i'm like does it i don't know and uh it's funny it's funny she said that because i remember when i was in the navy and i lived in california and i had i haven't went home in about two years at one point and uh, i went home and i came back and i was talking to my friend the great ricky and uh, Ricky said, man, I said, what's up? And he was like, your accent is heavy. And I'm like, sir, I do not have an accent, okay? I'm from California. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, I guess so. I guess that might be true. Uh, I don't know. Um, but July or July, how do you say it? Let me know. But um, today we are going to talk about the fall of professional wrestling and what you can do to avoid making the grave mistakes that professional wrestling has done. And, you know, they have alienated people since the late, eh, since the early 2000s, we'll say. They have alienated a lot of the casual audience, a lot of the fans. Now, in the 80s, one thing you could say about professional wrestling, when I used to watch it as a kid, I don't I don't watch it anymore. I'll I'll be up front. I don't watch it anymore. I don't enjoy it. But in the 80s, there was always men, women, children, older people, younger people. There were all kinds of people at wrestling events. And now you go to it. If you ever I was flipping through it one day, saw this wrestling program on TNT, and I was like, there's no, like, elderly people. There are no, like, I'm like, it's just the same looking kind of people, you know? I was just like, wow, that's kind of amazing. Like, how did they alienate a whole group of people? But we will discuss, you know, and we, I talk about this, so... Because you do not want now when you you start off, you some of you are going to have the audience that you want in 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 mind already, and some of you are going to figure out the kind of audience that you want to you know cultivate to you want to create content for you know, and it's it's no wrong or right way to do it. It's just sometimes some people know what they. Some people know what they want in the beginning and some people just sort of flesh their way through it. Me, myself, I sort of flesh my way through it. But, you know, that's just me. But you might have an idea. So, back in the 80s, wrestling was very, well, even before the 80s. I, you know, I was born in 1979. So, But even, even in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 50s, the 40s, wrestling was very hush-hush. You never knew, you know, that was well, i'm sure some people did but for the majority of people they didn't know that it was you know this now a lot of people would say wrestling is fake but listen if you get dropped on your head and you break your neck it can't be fake okay now the matches are scripted and the finish is scripted of course but but sometimes there sometimes there really is animosity sometimes there really is like you know, a lot of the times there's there used to be tension when it comes to these wrestlers because, you know, there's only a certain amount. You want to be the top. You want to be the top dog. You know, it's sort of like 
internet marketing. We, you want to be the best. I want to be the best. You know, we are going to, you know, strive to be the best. You want to be the best. Doesn't matter what you're doing. You want to be the best. So there's always going to be tension when you want to be the best at something. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. Listen, there's nothing wrong with tension. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be the best. There's nothing wrong with the person you work with wanting to be the best. You know, it is what it is. We all want to compete. You know, well, most of us, we all want to compete. We all want to be the best. But so there used to be tension. There used to be friction. There used to be, you know, a real, you could, you could sense it. You know, you could feel it. And fast forward to the day. Oh, man, I saw a thing on Twitter. I think Shaq, he wrestled somebody. They put him in the ambulance, quote unquote. And then they showed, they had video of him just walking out the ambulance, you know, and he was like, hey, great, great job, guys, and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, what is that about? Like, why would I watch? Why would I watch when it's so obviously, you know, phony these days? Like, why would I want to watch? Why would I waste my time? You know, and the matches, I was, uh, my wife was cooking one night. And it happened to be eight o'clock and I thought a basketball game was on, but no, it was wrestling. And I was like, oh, I haven't seen this in a long time. So let me watch. I watched the first five minutes and I said, oh, man, this is terrible. This is fake. And I said, nope, no, 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 no. And um, I didn't I didn't. I, I just was like, what is this, man? What is this? You know, it was. I guess the, the main focus now is not the storyline. That's another thing. This is. This is part of the alienation of wrestling. Let's talk about this. Storylines. Storyline. I remember one of the best storylines ever was Hulk Hogan and Macho Man in like 1988, I believe. Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, they teamed up. They were the, they were the, um, what was the, what, what was their names? The, Meg, the Mega Powers. Yeah, the Mega Powers. Macho Man, Hulk Hogan. Two great guys, two you know baby faces. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, baby faces are good guys. They teamed up. They had a thing, and then I remember they it started. I was like, oh man, they, um, like I think it was like January of '89, maybe. The Macho Man and Hulk Hogan started having problems. You know, it started having little. It was little things. It was little buildups, and then I was watching Saturday Night Main Event, and I think Miss Elizabeth got knocked out. And Hulk Hogan carried her back to the ring, carried her back to the back. And Macho Man fought on. He lost. He went to the back. He said, man, what's what you trying to do? What you trying to do, Hogan? And then, uh, you know, I think he knocked Hulk Hogan out, started beating him up. And the Miss Elizabeth was screaming. And they had this whole match. And it was the Mega Powers exploded, WrestleMania 5. And it was, you know, that was a great storyline. You know, that's that that is the essence of pro wrestling, storylines. Storylines are pro wrestling. I can give you, uh, I can give you five examples. I remember when Hulk Hogan fought The Rock. The storyline was Icon versus Icon. It was like, hey, before you came along, uh, sir, I was the band. I did nine WrestleManias, and you know, The Rock was like, hey, that was back then. I'm here now. I'm the, I'm the star of this show now. You know. And then we had Stone Cold and The Rock. They had epic battles. You know, their, their, their storyline was. I'm the top dog. No, I'm the talk do- top dog, you know? And I remember we'll go to another organization, WCW. It was it was it was Ric Flair versus Terry Funk. And I remember Terry Funk, he was like, Hey, I want a shot at the belt. And Ric Flair said, No, um, you're not in the top ten, homeboy, you know, you're retired or whatever. And Terry Funk beat him up and they had these, they had, you know, a couple of classic matches. And, you know, just things like that. Like the storylines were awesome. The storylines were good. They were great. You know, it was always like a personal battle and there was always people going for the going for the belt, you know, that kind of stuff. You fast forward to now. They focus on the wrestling. It's pro wrestling. Like everybody now knows that it's not like real so why would you focus on something that everybody knows is not like if you want to watch a real fight if you want to watch a somebody really beat up somebody you would go watch mma you would go watch you know boxing like why would you 
watch why would you care about the 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 ring work of two pro wrestlers like i don't care about i mean, I, I don't care about that like i remember i listened to this podcast a couple years ago and they was describing a, a hacksaw jim duggan match for those of you who don't know hacksaw jim duggan he used to walk around with a two by four and he used to say Ho! Oh! <laughs> and uh, it was very, it was very hokey. But guess what? You would, if you watch wrestling, if you watch WWF back then, you would scream it too. It was fun, and you really, I never cared about a hacksaw Jim Duggan match. I just thought hacksaw Jim Duggan was a great guy. He was a, uh, he sort, of, he was a stocky looking guy. You know, he had a clothesline. He used to do the little clothesline. He would come with the two by four, swing it around. And I, as long as Hacksaw Jim Duggan won, I didn't care what he, you know, what he did in the ring. And they gave, like, I guess they was, like, poo-pooing on his matches. And the guy that was hosting the show, he said, hey, man, it doesn't matter. He said, Hacksaw was over, okay? that's That was the most important thing. It doesn't matter about your ring work and all this kind of stuff. Are you connecting with the audience? You know, and that was one of the most important things. And they don't do that now. That's part of the alienation. Now they're worried about, Hey, how good did I look in the ring? How, bro? We all know it's not real. We all know that it's it's on the it's on the it's the, it's the fix. You know, it's like somebody's gonna win, somebody's gonna lose, and that's another thing. It's like there's no surprises anymore when it comes to wrestling because all these people, social media, has really put has it it, had, it definitely hasn't helped wrestling. But you'll see these you'll see these wrestlers, you know, which I don't understand it myself. You see these wrestlers, they like, oh, I'm playing a character on TV, and it's like, uh, you know, you sp- the reason why the wrestlers back back then a lot of them work like the great ones, they work because that's not too far from who they really are, you know. Stone Cold, he likes to drink beer, yes, he does. I'm sure he doesn't just drink it absent. Uh, you know all the time but he likes to he enjoys a good beer and he was from texas and you know he's the the rattlesnake and you know that was that was him he just turned up a little bit you know hulk hogan i remember once hulk hogan he he was on a i watched the um documentary and he was like i'm different from terry I'm, terry belaya is different from hulk hogan and i'm like is it are they seem like the same person to me i don't know and Ric Flair is Ric Flair, you know? I mean, it, it's not it, a lot of difference. But now the wrestlers are like, hey, I'll play a character on TV. And they'll just fight somebody, and then they'll go back there and take pictures together. And it's like, why am I watching this? Why, sh- why, would, I watch- why would I watch this when I know this is so fake? Sh- this is just be a TV show. Like, this is just, it's, it doesn't make sense to me, you know? You want in the pro wrestling, you want it to you want it to seem real. You want it to seem, you know, it's like uh that that's that's one reason why I I don't and now you know everybody does interviews. It's like when I when I was watching wrestling, the people was always in character. When whenever the camera was on, these people were always in character. Like, come on now, like you know, you see the uh Bobby the Brain. I remember the late great Bobby the Brain Heenan, he was on a little um, TV show, and for years and years and years, Bobby the Brain Heenan he portrayed a character. He was the Weasel, and he 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 was never a fond of Hulk Hogan. And this was in the year like two thousand. I remember I watched this clip, and Hulk Hogan came out, and they had been they haven't been in the ring together in forever, forever. Okay. And Bob the Brain Heenan, he was Hulk Hogan walking down the ring. He said, hey, I still don't care for this guy, okay? And I was like, wow, that's staying in character. And that is part of the reason why re- pro wrestling has alienated a lot of the fans. It's like these guys do not stay in character for nothing. These guys are so busy talking about the characters, this, that, and the other. It's ridiculous. And you do not want to – listen, if you are – if you start a – company you start a business and you have a an audience and i'm not saying you have to stick to the same script all the time like things change people change you know don't get me wrong but you do not want to mess up you do not want to screw around 
with the audience, with the people that got you there, you know? Like some people will just imagine if you told the person who bought all your books, all your videos, watch all your videos. What if you told them, hey man, hey, just stop. Stop watching my videos. I'm not, I'm not here for you. Okay. Like how would that sound? How would that, how would that be? And a lot of the pro wrestling has started to, well, not started to, has already alienated the the fan base that it 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 started off with you know there's no old people in the audience anymore there's no young there's no you know babies there's no there's no nothing in the audience you know there's some kids there's some people middle-aged people like the average age of a wrestling fan now is like 40 or 50 years old like that's that's crazy that's crazy to me and it's it's very, I mean, it's it's crazy how how do you how do you lose such a big fan base? Like when I when me and my brother was watching it all the time in the late nineties, it was like seven million people watching wrestling on just one show, like seven eight million people watching it, and now they barely get over a million people. In 20 years, they lost like 7 million people watching every week. Like, that's crazy. That's Don't alienate your fan base. Don't alienate the people that are loyal to you. Don't alienate the hardcore audience, you know. Yeah, you want to get more people. Yeah, you want to build. You want to grow. Don't get me wrong. You want to try different things. You try different things, but that doesn't mean you have to just say, F it. We're doing this whole thing over, you know. Um, it's, it's, it, it's, it's something that you should look into something that there's all kinds of stories. There's all kinds of stories like this, you know, then, you know, wrestling is not the only group or business that has, you know, pissed off an audience, lost an audience, you know, there, there are other examples, but. I know this one personally, so this is why we are talking about on today's today's episode. And you know, you start to build something, you start to grow something, you know. And the the thing that you can make the mistake on is like, oh no, nah, okay, I need to. It's like I okay, I give you an example. Sometimes I give you an example. I listen to this podcast. This guy, he was doing baby, baby strollers, baby strollers. And he was like, they were like, who are, who is your audience? And he said, oh, we cater to the wealthy. And it's like, okay. All right. And so he let, he let, he let the audience know right there. Like, hey, you, well, he definitely was talking to me because his baby stroller was like $1,500. And I said, whoa. I ain't no way I'm paying fifteen hundred bucks for a baby stroller. You kidding me? Nope. You know, so right then he was letting you know, like, hey, we we're high end, you know. And a lot of times, you know, let's say, let's I give I give you a better example. All right, Popeyes, okay. I enjoy, used to enjoy going to Popeyes, Popeyes, Popeyes chicken. Popeyes was good, and then Popeyes decided to come out with a chicken sandwich, which nothing wrong with that. And the chicken sandwich took off. Listen, chicken sandwich made Popeyes. If Popeyes wasn't already valuable, they made them probably twice as valuable. And then I think Popeyes. I don't, they, I'm sure they didn't. They didn't. They didn't piss off everybody, but they definitely pissed me off. And you know, I, I'm. I, hey, I'm a. I'm. I was a good customer to Popeyes, but they started doing things like as soon as the as soon as the chicken sandwich took off, like two months later, I went into Popeyes and I noticed. I said, oh, they have jacked them prices up so much. I said, you know what? F Popeyes, and I do not go to I. I've been to Popeye's once in the last year and a half, two years since they got their chicken sandwich going. Nope. 
not for me anymore. Like, why would you jack? I mean, hey, God bless you. You can do it because now you have the platform. Everybody's talking about you. I mean, I would do it too, but no, I wouldn't do it. But I wouldn't raise them up that much. But the way they raise them up, highway robbery to me, to me. I'm like, nope. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not fooling with y'all. I'm. I'm done with y'all. But there's, you know, there's so many different ways that you can reach. So many different ways that you can reach your audience, a new audience, and keep your other audience happy. Now you're not gonna make everybody happy. You know, don't get me wrong. But I, I, I think wrestling just went went about it the wrong way. Like they just started. You know, talking all the time, telling everybody, hey, this ain't real. This is fake. This is phony. You start telling people that. And it's like, why the F am I going to watch this if I already know it's fake and I already know it's phony? Like, you're you're telling me that it's fake and you're telling me that it's phony. But you want me to act like I'm supposed to sit here and, you know, because wrestling is story. Wrestling is get yourself swept in the emotion of the wrestling event. I remember watching Hulk Hogan and The Rock. 2002 if you never watched wrestling matches before don't watch it for the wrestling watch it for the audience watch how engaged the audience is when it comes to this event watch how engaged the people are it's like and this is one of the last this is the last time that i really you know probably watched wrestling like that but it was so intense and you know i I knew that it wasn't, it was on the, I knew that it was on the fix, but I didn't care because at that moment, I'm like, these are two guys that I have known. These are two guys that I've watched many a night wrestle. And I'm like, this is important. And I had a knot in my stomach. I was nervous. That's emotion. And you cannot get that emotion. It's hard to get that emotion out, out of a wrestling event. It is like very tough. It's like, because you already know that these people are going to talk about it the next day. They're going to discuss the characters. They're going to discuss how they talk to the guy about it, you know. But that is what professional wrestling is all about. And they alienated so many people, like myself, who I wouldn't watch. You couldn't pay me enough to watch. I don't, you know, I remember for a little while my brother was like, hey, man, let's get the WWE Network and let's split it. I'm like, okay. I go. I would go back and watch old wrestling. I don't even want to watch that no more. I'm so disgusted with the wrestling, um, or with with the WWE and the rest of whoever else you know does professional wrestling. So you know it is what it is. But it's like I know a lot. I know, and a lot of times you you start to gain an audience, and you're like, okay, and you're like, what can I do to get more people? Don't. Forget about the people that got you to the point of where you're at now. You know, don't don't poo poo on those people. You know, don't 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 be professional wrestling. Don't be NASCAR. You know, NASCAR is another one. They used to start at one o'clock every day. They used to start at one o'clock every every Sunday. They would start at one o'clock, one o'clock Eastern time, twelve noon Central time. And it was great. And I remember one time they was like, oh, no, we're not doing that now. Now we're going to be at 8 o'clock on Saturday night. We're going to be 4 o'clock on Sunday. And the hardcore audience was like, hey, what are you doing that for? And they're like, oh, we're trying to get some more. We're trying to get more. We're trying to reach out to more people. No, you're going to lose it. You're going to you're gonna lose these people. These are the people that show up with the RVs. These are the people that show up with the T-shirts. These are the people that love these guys. Love, love these guys. If you never never ever watch Ray NASCAR, you're driving down the road one day, you'll see somebody with uh people still Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale Earnhardt Sr. He died, God bless him. He died 20 years ago. I think he died like 2001. I remember that. If you, if you don't know anything about race NASCAR, you know Dale Earnhardt Sr. Um, the number three. Put your three fingers up for Dale Earnhardt. But even to this day, people still wear the shirts. People still have the flags. I was talking to a guy one day about NASCAR, and he's like, man, I miss – he said, I miss senior. I said, yeah, man. I said, I like junior, you know. And he's like, man, I miss senior. And I'm like – and he, he didn't even have to say anything else. I knew who he was talking about. And those are the people that they're going to alienate. Those are people that they did alienate for a little while. I don't know if these – I don't know if they came back, but the point is 
you have an audience, you have an established audience, you know, yeah, grow, grow your business, grow, grow this thing that you're growing, but don't lose, the, don't lose the base. Don't, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. You know, don't lose the people that brought you to the dance. That's the whole point of this episode. Don't lose the people that you, that brought you to the dance. You know, wrestling did that. Now it used to be 8 million people watching every week. Now it's barely a million people. You know, it's like, you know, I wouldn't, you couldn't pay me enough to watch it anymore. That's it. You know, disgusting. But, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't kill, don't, don't kill the core, you know, for some friends, people, you know, you know, get those people in, bring those people in, indoctrinate those people to what you're doing. You know, you don't have to, don't change for the people. Have the people change for you, you know? Tell the people, this is what we do. This is why we do it. This is how we do it, you know? And if they like it, they like it. They'll like it. They don't? Oh, well. You're not going to change everybody's mind, you know? All right? So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the podcast today. We will be back tomorrow with the all-new episode of Online Marketing Moves. Okay? But in the meantime and in between time, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already, go check out the YouTube, subscribe to the channel. We are going, matter of fact, today I'm going to make a list of the videos that we're going to start producing. And we're going to start uploading them probably either this weekend or Monday because we got to get this going, you know. I'm I'm tired of hearing myself talk about YouTube, so we're going to get it going. But um. And go to the Facebook page and like and share the online marketing moves page. We're trying to build that. We're trying to make it grow. And uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with the all new episode of online marketing moves. But until then, my name is Tony Rizzano. Thank you for listening. And as always, everybody, peace.